Ah, can you feel it? Christmas Eve at the time of filming this episode. Oh, families around, the tree is existing. You know what makes me think of? Squid brains. Did you know that squids have donut shaped brains and the donut goes around their esophagus? So you have like the esophagus and then the brain is wrapped around it. And even though colossal squid, giant squid are in fact giant, relatively speaking, uh, tiny, tiny beaks. And those beaks chomp down on food, but the food can't be too big or else it touches their brain on the way down their throat mouth. I know it sounds weird, but it's important to remember that evolution doesn't select for the perfect engineering. It just selects for what works. A brain around an esophagus didn't totally hamper the evolutionary line of giant squid, colossal squid, squid in general, cephalopods. And so it just works and they procreated and they spread their squiddy genes all over the squiddy place. And now they got donut brains. Festive. Oh, what's that? Oh, I should go back to making the pies and shut up about squid? <laughs> no, I'm your family. You have to listen to me. Hello and welcome to another edition of Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science, where I take all of your nerdiest comments, corrections, and questions, and I try to fit my brain around it without physically hurting it, like a squid chomping down on food. And then I tell you what's coming up next on this episode, hint, you probably made a model of one of these in science class, and then it's really the only science demo you ever learned, and then you kept doing it because the educational system in America is not that great. Yeah, I'm taking shots. But getting right down to it, in the last episode of Because Science, we are trying to figure out how force lightning works. Bleh! And I haven't seen the new movie yet. I'm filming this before the movie actually came out, so don't put any spoilers in the comments, and also, I mean, I don't really care, but I said in the episode that a Sith like Papa Palpatine might be able to shock a Jedi if the Force and Force powers, the dark side of the Force, had some control over the flow of electrons. They could use these electrons to encourage the electrical breakdown of air, and with substantial voltage, like tens of millions of volts, they could shock their targets into submission to the point where they're asking their robot daddy, please, don't clip that. But what did you have to say? Oh, and this is gonna be a slightly shorter episode of Footnotes because it's about lightning and this is a lightning round. Whoo, here we go. Alex Kotman says, uh, if electricity travels the shortest distance to ground, what's stopping a force lightning user from trying to use said power and the lightning going straight into the ground instead of just ahead of them? Well, Alex, I think there's a good chance of that happening. At least some of the electricity would be going through the ground and, when you bring that up, actually that's the most dangerous form of lightning. Statistically speaking, more fatalities from lightning happen through ground strikes, where the lightning hits the ground and spreads out in all directions across the ground and then goes up into someone's leg and then across their heart and then down through the other leg. So I think an even more deadly application of force lightning would be not the bleh that you've seen and that you expect, but instead like a bleh and through the ground. Be harder to dodge too and absorb. You know what? Let's make a cannon. Abrams. Our next comment comes from Dragon Weir, frequent commenter 44, who says, Hey Kyle, love the show. Ah! Does conditioning your hair using one and only argan oil increase or decrease your conductivity? Well, one and only argan oil is the one and only argan oil I use. It's not a sponsor, but they should be. Does it make me more conductive putting products in my hair? Dude, I don't know. As you saw in the episode, I am constantly building up charge. And it's not just when I'm like touching poles and stuff. When I pet my cats, I shock my cat's little noses. I can't stop it. Am I static shock? Maybe, maybe. I'll use my powers for good. Our next comment comes from Dryness258 who says, but why does Palpatine get older when Windu deflects his lightning back to him? Dude, I have no idea. I think they just needed a, a way to make the actor look like a monster mash by the time they became Palpatine. So I think it was lazy filmmaking. I have a better, more sciencey suggestion. If you have lightning reflected back on your face, you should get marks all over your body and face that look like this. These are called Lichtenberg marks or Lichtenberg figures. And these are the outlines of electricity traveling at dangerous levels through your body. This is what it looks like when someone gets struck by lightning. They have these permanent, almost fractal-like scars. And I would argue that this is much cooler for a villain if this was all over their face and scarring their body. This would look a lot cooler than what Palpatine looks like. Yeah. But the nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this episode, I'm giving to Christian Sebastiano Baldo, who does an entire rendition of the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise, except using evil man bun and myself. He says, man bun. 
Did you ever hear the tragedy of Doth maintain the fabulous? No. I thought not. It's not a story super nerds would tell you. It's an argan oil legend. Doth Maintain was a dark lord of the science, so powerful, so wise, and so fabulous, he could use the science to influence super nerds to create sharks with frickin' laser beams on their heads. He had such a knowledge of the Maintain, he could even keep the ones he cared about from going bald. Ooh. He could actually save people from baldness? And the dark side of the science is a pathway to many abilities some consider unnatural. What happened to him? He became so powerful, the only thing he was afraid of was losing his hair, which eventually he did, of course. Unfortunately, he taught his apprentice everything he knew. Then his apprentice shaved him in his sleep. Ironic. He could save others from baldness, but not himself. Is it possible to learn this power? Not from a super nerd. That goes without saying, you win. You win maybe this year. You win Super Nerd uh, Commenter of 2019, Christian. What am I forgetting? All right. Ah! You are indeed a Super Nerd. But of course, I'm not always right, and I'm sure you have many corrections for me. If you do, make sure you're liking, subscribing, commenting on this here video and this channel to get notified when we do anything, and then your name will be there forever on the internet until the apocalypse comes and all digital media is erased from society. Not long now. Our first correction comes from Seth Dawson, who says, maybe the Sith have hunters and sax organs like electric eels. Well, yeah, it is possible that maybe Sith have some kind of mutated electrocytes, which are the cell types that electric eels use to shock their prey into submission. But electric eels devote like most of their body to these electrocytes, by which I mean you have to have a lot of them to build up just a generous charge. So an electric eel is pretty big and it's pretty long and it's only generating a charge in like 600 volts. We are talking about tens of millions of volts potentially for a Sith to arc across the room. So. Most of their body would have to be electrical cells. I don't know if all those cells could even fit in a human form, but then again, I don't know how a lot of Star Wars works. Neither does Star Wars. Next correction comes from Trini Torres, who says, I can't believe how irritated I get when he says Baby Yoda. Please stop. No one in the entire galaxy calls him that. Wrong. Everyone calls him the Baby Yoda. What do you got against the Yoda? You know what I say to that comment? Hit the Yoda, Jack, and don't come back. No Yoda, no Yoda, no Yoda. How dare you say something bad about the wee Baby Yoda? What a sweet little green goblin creature. Is that an Irish accent? Is that a Scottish accent? I don't care. <laughs> Our next correction comes from Ranesh Thakordine, which sounds like a Star Wars name, who says, my biggest problem with Force Lightning is that there's no Force Thunder. <laughs> Shaking my H. I agree with you, Ranesh. If there is some Force Lightning, there should be some Force Thunder. If you've ever seen the equivalent of what we've been talking about, like a giant Tesla coil discharging millions of volts, you know it is loud, but it doesn't sound like thunder. It's not a single boom, boom. It's more like eat, eat, eat. Actually, you can find videos of Tesla coils playing the Imperial March with electricity. I can't do this song or else I'll get I'll get sued. But there would be some sound associated with Force Lightning. It's just not going to sound like how you think. It's going to be really annoying. Like the prequels. <laughs> Woo! But the nerdiest correction at the time I'm filming this video, I'm giving to now two-time super nerd Adrian, who says, hey, Kyle, love the show. Ha! Ah! Says, so Force Lightnings are similar to regular Lightnings. Isn't Lightning plural? Whatever, you must know. In terms of release power, the typical power of an Earth Lightning See, now why you say it like, is around 10 gigawatts, but they usually only last for a very short amount of time, a few microseconds or so. On the contrary, in Star Wars, the Force Lightnings last much longer. In Return of the Jedi, Palpatine shocks Luke for what maybe be 10 seconds all in total, so that could be a total energy of like 100 gigajoules for comparison. And despite Luke's amazement during that scene, Yod lifting the X-Wing in the, in the puppet swamp could not have required more than one megajoule. Assuming some stuff. Kyle, is the dark side stronger? Yes. Look, I'm not trying to sway you here, but yes, the dark side is more powerful and it is healthier. 
to engage with your emotions, to understand them, to work through them, not to avoid them, not to seal them away and never to engage with it, hide your feelings, why? That's not human. Technically, Jedis and Sith aren't human, but if it were me, I think understanding and engaging with your emotions is a lot healthier, and you can shoot force lightning at people. So join the dark side, just like you did, Adrian, because you're now a two-time super nerd. Ah! <laughs> now, moving right along to this week's episode of Because Science. This week's episode is why volcano layers are a terrible idea. That's right, in this week's episode of Because Science, we are looking into another supervillain trope, the secret volcano layer built inside an active volcano. What kind of volcanoes are we talking about? How cool they be? What problems would you face? Could this actually be the worst place to build your base? I think so, and I worked with legendary super nerd XKCD to make this episode, so you're not gonna wanna miss it. But before we get to volcano layers and all that jazz, make sure you go watch the latest episode of Because Science Yet, all about four lightning there and send me your best nerdiest comments corrections and questions at youtube.com slash because science facebook.com slash because science and at because science on instagram and twitter and don't forget if you celebrate merry xmas happy holidays merry christmas happy hanukkah and if you don't celebrate uh, i still hope you have a wonderful rest of your 2019 let's make the next decade one that counts because we're gonna have to make pretty sure the world doesn't just set on fire and be nice to each other because this is all we got. You've been sincerely a present to me engaging with all the stuff that we do here, so thank you, and uh, see you soon. Ah, oh, that was too genuine. I don't like it. Get out of here!